And now here's the finished bench. It's looking good, there's a lot of spare room. So I ended up building a bench to hook up my smaller torch outside. This compound saw quickly helped me make the boards I needed and this power drill helped me with everything else. This drill has gotten a lot of use in my shop. If there's one tool I could recommend would be a good drill. So I was planning to go over more on building the bench or even making it a, a separate video, but I ended up deleting some of the footage. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do an overview of what I have left here of the remaining footage. It's made mostly of all one by fours and I use bolts. That way I could take it apart later in case I need to. I found I had to brace the legs across on two sides and then once more on the back to really stabilize it up. And then a little side shelf to hold some tools or glass rods. And I got a lot of use out of those red clamps there. I would clamp everything together before I would start to make marks or drill holes. So for the base of the bench, I just bolted up the one by fours in a square. I then added another one by four across the middle to support the weight. And then I bolted down those metal sheets to make a fireproof surface. And it's always a good idea to repurpose an old desk, you know, maybe one you have laying around or one that's for sale. But I thought I would add this in in case someone was looking to make their own desk. And so this might give them some ideas. And I'll be getting into the torch setup in a minute here. But first you'll see I clamped these L brackets underneath the desk to hold this board up so I can screw it into place. Sometimes it can be harder working alone, but then in the end, it's nice to kind of stand back and see the finished product and enjoy what you made. So it's always a good idea to drill a little guide hole for the screw, that way you don't split the wood. And I'm using screws just because I ran out of bolts here and it is a little bit easier. And then I also have a little tabletop barbecue grill that I might use this with. That or I can bring it out to my studio and make it like a permanent secondary torch desk. But now let's talk about setting up the torch. So I'm going to start off by mounting my torch down on this new bench I made. It's always good to mount your torch to your bench. That'll help them keep it coming back at me or rolling around. I'm going to connect my hoses onto my barb fittings. You want to make sure you have a nice flush cut on these hoses before you start. I'm going to use one of these metal clamps you tighten with the screwdriver. And now the propane line. And next I'll attach a few parts to my propane hose, that way I can attach it to the flashback arrestor. I'm going to have to use a barb fitting and another piece in order to screw it onto there. Just got to put this barb fitting in there. And then screw it onto here. Oh, they go backwards. And then from there I screw the flame arrestor onto the regulator. And it doesn't need any threading tape. These fittings will make an airtight seal. Just like that. Now I can hold it and use my wrench to tighten it up a little bit. Remember I have to go left to tighten it, right to loosen it. So it'd be this, this way. And I am going to tighten it up once it's on the tank. I'm mainly doing it in my hands here just for a demonstration. I'll put this clamp on first and then attach it to the regulator onto that barbed fitting. Now that's on there nice, I can put this on my tank. So I'm supporting the weight of the regulator with one hand while I'm screwing it in with the other hand. 
and you want to be careful not to cross the threads you should be able to twist it in pretty far with your hands before going over to the wrench and again these b size fittings should create an airtight seal when you screw them all the way in so you won't need threading tape for the b size fittings and now as i open up the tank you'll see this first gauge increase which will show us the tank pressure it went up above 800 and then the second gauge will be the line pressure everything past the regulator i'll go ahead and turn that on to five and one quick way to test for leaks is to have your tank on turn your regulator on i'm going to turn it up to about eight here then turn off the tank now with the tank closed, if there is a leak, it'll show real quickly on these dials as there's no new propane coming into the lines. And we'll see how long it can hold its pressure. And then the oxygen tanks would be very similar to the propane tanks. So instead I'm going to do a concentrator hookup here. And they already have barbed fittings on them so you can just hook the hose straight to that. And you just hook it up and turn it on and raise it up to about as high as you can go. If you go past the highest, it's going to drop in purity of oxygen pretty quickly. Now with that set up, I'm going to go ahead and try something different with an outdoors at nighttime episode. I'm going directly off a concentrator, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my oxygen valve all the way up. That's a lot different than doing it outdoors here. Uh, one thing I noticed is the wind. I'm trying, that's why I have this here, to cut down on the wind coming from this way. Before the project, it's gonna be a marble implosion. And clean your glass thoroughly before you get in with isopropyl alcohol. I'm holding glass mostly level, at an angle downward a little bit. But if you hold it down too much, it'll end up slumping. You can correct that by holding it just a tad bit up. Then once I have a nice gather, I'm going to use my paddle to flatten out the base. It's a little scarier at night, it seems. Okay, so heat it up and push. And pull back. And this is a bluish green from Glass Alchemy. Glass Alchemy has a large selection of opaque colors. Move the dots around a little bit, but not too much once you have them placed. Where I choose Tag Glass for transparent colors. And I'll heat it up and it'll kind of suck into the clear glass. But both companies make some good glass, Tag and Glass Alchemy. Then heat it up again. And then each time I do this, it pushes that color deeper into that clear glass. And this is a purple color called Wisteria from Tag Glass. You want to make your dots even in size. And some techniques do require pulling stringers, but it's good to learn how to work off the rod you get just to save time. And so I have those dots melted in. I'm going to heat it back up, flatten it out, and then heat it out again to where it rounds. That's sucking those dots in even more. Those center dots have become really, really small on the surface. So heat that up and round it out. I didn't bring my marble mold with me, so I'll show you how to do it with that one. You want a very centered punty. Then I'll melt off the other clear rod. You can swirl it off like this to speed it up a little bit and to avoid any unwanted stringers. And I'll melt that clear glass in. That's looking pretty round right there. And now as I finish up this marble, I just wanted to say thank you for subscribing if you're new to the channel. Feel free to leave a comment and hit that like button. 
Also make sure to have your notifications turned on so you don't miss the video coming up, the Marini episode. If they're smaller items, they usually will cool more evenly already. But when they get larger or if they're more complex hollow items, then they can definitely uh, require a kilning process to finish it. And then so right now I'm gathering the glass up and I'll flatten it out for another implosion. And this will help the clear glass melt around the dots you add as you melt it back into a sphere and flatten it. And it's better to do it on your desk on a marvering pad to keep it more centered. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a stringer. And that's just by heating up a large section of this colored rod. I'm going to heat up a large section of this colored rod, attach it, and then pull it out. And you'll see a nice even glow throughout that whole section. That means you'll pull out a nice even stringer. The slower I pull, the thicker it is. The faster I pull, the thinner the stringer will be. The center dot. So you want to heat up the surface a little bit and push into it or draw onto it with your stringer. You want to get it nicely melted into the surface and not just fused on top of the surface where it'll break off. So this one I'm going to do more of a flower pattern. I've, I laid down some lines. I'm going to melt those in and flatten them out a little bit. And for flower petals, it's good to use an opaque color. You know, a solid color that won't allow light through it. And as that line melts into the clear glass, it'll turn more into a ribbon of glass instead of a line. And then the dots will melt through the clear glass as a three dimensional dot. And you wanna pull out very thin stringers for petals and then kind of overlap the lines a little bit like I'm doing here. And this is a very basic flower. I'll probably do a more detailed flower later on on my larger torch. I laid down some lines now. I'm going to heat those up and melt them in. You can see them right there. I have them completely melted in into a sphere. And that pushing process kind of opens up those petals. And then I'll go ahead and back it with some of the blue leprechaun. You can heat up a gather of the color and attach it to the back. Or in this case, what I'm doing is kind of drawing it onto the back. And you want the back to be hot, but not too molten as you don't want to start to distort that work inside the marble. But now that I got that laid down on there, I'll go ahead and round it out and punty up to it. And I'll get ready to melt the rest of this glass in for a nice lens on the front. And the more glass you put on the front, the lensing side, the better of an effect you'll get. Now the lens will magnify your work, so everything underneath it will look a lot larger than what it really is. So using gravity and the heating process, you can shape out a nice convex lens. And I'm pointing it up towards the sky a little bit as I'm rotating it around, just so that it slumps down a little quicker. If I would point it down, it would look more like a cone. So I'm gonna work that side, round it out really well, and then punty up and finish up on the other side. And if you look through the molten glass here, you'll see that flower looks a lot larger because of that lens I was talking about. It's pretty cool. And as I work every side of the marble and get it more round, I'll use smaller and smaller punties 
That way they leave smaller marks or dots of glass. I'm gonna go with a smaller punty. Try to get it as centered as I can. Then as it solidifies, you don't want to move it back and forth or else that will induce stress as it sets up. I need to be careful not to bump this punty too hard as it will release the marble too soon. But it's going to leave a little mark in the end. You can see here in the dark the heat radiating out of it. That flower there in the center. You need to be careful breaking punties off on your torch. It's something you should probably do with a tool. I'm gonna get that last mark in there. And then I'll finish up this second marble. Now here's the third marble I made and I'm just showing you the backing part here. And I wanted to focus on this because it's a good idea to back your work, especially if it's a one directional or kind of a one angle piece or this implosion marble where the sides and the front look really cool, but the back where you see the work is done isn't very attractive. So you can cover up the back of your work with a solid color or even another pattern. And here I've gone and swirled some of that blue leprechaun around to make a spiral backing. And now with that blue leprechaun completely melted in, you'll notice it glows a lot brighter and differently than the surrounding clear glass. Everything you make looks a lot different when it's heated up like this. I always thought it was a cool little light show, especially here at night. Went all the way smooth and all the way melted in. That's looking good. It is illuminating my whole backyard and it's pretty cool. It'll melt in that last little bit. And then once it cools enough to where I can grab it with my tweezers and not leave a mark, I'll grab it, break that punty, and finish off that, that last mark. Now here are the three marbles I made. One was a dot implosion, the other one was line implosion, and the other one just focused on the backing. And I will have some more marble techniques coming up. This was just some basic ones that you could practice at home. I do like how they turned out. I think they're looking pretty good. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Now make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And as always, have a great day.